So, you want to know more about selection tools, how to use them and make your life as a digital artist much more easier. If that's the case, you're on the right channel because in today's video, we'll be discussing all about that coming up. So like always, before starting off with the video, I just wanted to mention if you're interested and you want to be a part of the community in a much more personalized way, my Discord server is now up and running for a couple of months, maybe one, I don't know. There will be a link in the description. You can be a part of the community or even if you just want to be there to ask questions or clear your doubts about Creator or Digital Art in general, you can join right now. And also, I just wanted to give a shout out to Hirsch for Nitro boosting the server as well as for being active in the server. So yeah, enough of that stuff you're not interested in. Let's just jump back right into the main video. So here we are in Gate of 5 project, the one I worked on for my previous video on how I turn my pictures into carry creatures or cartoons basically. And we ended up with this beautiful gorgeous masterpiece that is Ethan Becker's face. If you want to know about this video, how I did it, how I basically make my carry creatures, the overall workflow, you can watch that older video but only after doing what you came here for. That is to learn more about selection tools. Now, if you simply cannot find them anywhere on your canvas, what you can do is you can go into the left side of the screen in the bottom section and over there you can find almost 8 different alterations of the selection tool option. Each and every single one of them perform the same, the same action of selecting certain area in your canvas, however they do it differently based on their own unique abilities as I said before. Now in simpler words, for those people who don't know anything about digital art, selection tool allows you to select certain areas or sections in your layer on the canvas basically. And as soon as you make those selections, every change you make, whether you create any stroke, do a little bit of shading or transform its shape, size or structure, every single change you make will be applied only to that selection section. Pretty basic stuff but I had to get it out there for those people who don't know anything about digital art and they are pretty much new to this field. Now the first few selection tools are pretty similar. The square icon creates square selections, the one in square shape. The circle one does the same thing but with circle shapes. Now the next one allows you to create polygon selections by connecting straight lines with each other to create a closed shape, again known as the polygon. And this is how you create selection for your polygon tool. Now personally I use it only to create stylized shading using the cell shading technique. I've seen other people use it brilliantly so if you want to do that as well you can do it. It's a very personalized art style thing. If you're not into that stuff, it's pretty much useless when it comes to coloring. But yeah, I've seen people doing amazing things with it. So you can do that as well. Apart from the polygon selection, we have a freehand selection tool. Similar to polygon selection, it allows you to select certain customized shapes. But instead of straight lines, we can use freehand strokes, which allows us to create much more dynamic selections on the basis of what we are drawing with or what we are dealing with. And personally speaking, I use this a lot because how easy it is to use with a drawing tablet. If you're using a mouse, maybe you should just simply stick with the polygon selection. But if you have a drawing tablet, as I said, you can use it pretty easily. Simply just make a selection, just like you would draw a line. Just like in our case, I selected the face of my carry creature. And now you can either use it to color shade the selection using a soft airbrush to avoid any color leakage. Just look at what I'm doing right now. It makes the shadows look much more better than what they previously were without actually leaking anything out of the selection. Or what you can do is you can use the transformation tool and you can edit the position, transformation or placement of your selected area, which is our face in this case, on the canvas. I usually won't do it in a much more finished product. Maybe if I'm on the line art phase or sketching, I might use it for changing the transformation or the position. But right now, I won't do it because it's much more polished and much more finished. But also keep one thing in mind while you're using this selection tool, that is, it will need a lot of practice and precision. You won't get it right in the first time. The more you use it, the more you will be familiar with it and it will be much more easier for you in the future to make much more precise selections. Also, if you want to inverse the selection, go to the top tab section. In the select option, choose the inverse selection over there. Or what you can do is you can do the same by pressing the Control shift i and it will inverse all of your selections. Now, if you inverse the selection, what does that mean actually is that you will be able to paint everywhere outside the selected area. Instead of previously what you used to do was draw inside it, now you can draw outside it. If you want a better representation of all of your selected areas on your canvas, you can either go on the top layer over here and just hover your mouse over it and it will show you a preview of all the visible selections on your layer. Apart from that, now coming back to all of the remaining tools, the magic wand selection tool selects all of the area which is of a similar color and around each other. As you can see over here, as soon as I select this color, all the colors of the basic tone or the same wavelength will be selected which are around it. 
However, it is a little different from the color selection tool, which selects all of the colors on your canvas as long as they are of the same wavelength and the same tone. That means as soon as you select the color red or purple, all of the colors throughout the canvas, whether they are near to each other or not, they will be selected and you can edit them from there. So this is the difference between your magic wand selection and your color based selection. The next one is the Bezier curve selection tool. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing it right. To be very fair, nobody gives a shit. Personally speaking, I usually don't use this in my workflow, but if you want to, you can use it. It's over there. What it basically does is it allows you to create more precise curve path selections. Unlike the freehand uh, selection tool, you can control every stroke you make in a much more precise way. But to be very fair, personally speaking, it's much more time consuming and the results are simply not worth it for my art style. But you can use it if you want to. It's over there and it might work for your art style, but it doesn't work for mine. And the last one is the magnetic selection tool, which automatically selects all of the area from point A to B, which you'll make yourself by using the cursor. For example, if I press my mouse over here at this point, then drag it over here and press this another point, it will automatically form a selection between both of these points. This is a super efficient method, but it works only if you have a good PC or you have a much more simplified shape because it requires a lot of processing power to find the distance between or the area between one point to another. Sometimes when I use this, Krita software just simply stops responding or my PC crashes, so I don't recommend it. Since we are done discussing these, we can discuss about much more advanced options which Krita provides us for changing the various attributes of these selection tools. The first one are the modes. As you can see over here, the first one allows you to create selections for pixel based images, which 90% of you will be working with. And the next one, the next mode is the one for creating vector selections in case you're working with vector images, which is most of you won't be doing because if you were doing that, you won't be using Krita. There are better softwares for that, uh, like flash or illustrator or anything like that. But Krita is more focused on pixel based images. Now, just below that we have action options. The first one is the replacement action option. If this one is turned on, whenever you make a selection, it replaces the old one if it is there, just like what I'm doing over here. Every time I make a selection, a new one, the older selection get replaced by it. The second one is the intersect action mode or whatever you call it, which allows you to actually make selections inside the already existing one. That means if you try to draw outside the already selected area, uh, the, all of the selections will be removed. However, if you create inside of it, you will be able to select the area. Now, unlike the first one we talked about, the replacement selection, we have an add action, which instead of replacing the old ones, just simply adds more area into it. Just like you can see right here. I made a selection. And instead of replacing the older one, it creates more of the selected area and add into the original one. Now, unlike the previous one, which is the add, we have the subtract one as well, which instead of adding something to your previously selected area will subtract from it. Uh, as the name indicates, pretty simple stuff. Just like what I did with the circular selection, I just subtracted some area from the overall shape. And finally, the last action allows us to color the selected area, except the one which is in between or intersecting with each other. As you can see over here, we have the circle and a triangle, and we have this area in between. If, if you try to color it, we can color throughout the selection except the area which is intersecting with each other. So yeah, this was it for today's video and for all of the selection tools. If you want to continue the session, there are a lot of videos out there, you can watch them as well. Or if you think you have a very minute doubt, there is a high possibility that I've already covered that doubt in any of my previous videos. So make sure to check them out as well. So yeah, as I said, this is it for today's video. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, like always, peace.